Hi there, Steve Kaufman here. Today I want to talk about, and I want to hear from you about, why you study languages, and I'm going to tell you why I study languages. Before I get into that, I want to ask a question too. What is the preferred frequency for these videos? Once a month, once a week, once every two weeks, twice a week? I would be interested in hearing from you uh, because that'll help me make up my mind as to how frequently you know I should be doing them. Uh, I'm falling a bit behind here. I was doing videos in different languages. Uh, I've been busy. Uh, I will get to an Italian one uh, either this weekend or early next week. Uh, tomorrow I have to drive to Whistler, which is about an hour and 15 minutes from where I live. There is a three-day conference, uh, a lumber conference. Uh, lumber buyers are coming from all over the world. So I'm going to be going up there to meet people, uh, customers, and hopefully new customers. So I was just thinking to myself, you know, I'll be driving up there and it's a spectacular drive surrounded by snow-capped mountains here in, in August, September. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, but the whole way up, I will be listening to probably this. I Promessi Sposi, which is an Italian novel written in the 19th century about events in Italy in the uh, 17th century. It's, it's sort of the classic novel in Italian. This, video, this audio, by the way, is by Il Narratore, who is a tremendous uh, audio narrator for Italian. You can look him up on the internet, ilnarratore.com. Perhaps the outstanding uh, audiobook that he's done that I've enjoyed is Pinocchio, where he does the different characters in Pinocchio. It's spectacular. By the way, both I Promessi Sposi and Pinocchio the texts are available on link with LibriVox audio, but the audio done by Il Narratore is, is well worth paying more for to listen to. It's, it's spectacular. So I'm already looking forward to driving up to Whistler listening to I Promessi Sposi, which I listened to seven or eight years ago when I, at a previous sort of period of concentration on Italian. Uh, also, here while well, driving around in Vancouver, because in one way or another I'm in the car an hour a day, uh, and so I went to find podcasts in Italian, and uh, Rai Due, Rai, the ra national radio uh, uh, broadcasting network in, in Italy, they have a chain number two, which puts out podcasts, fantastic podcasts, which I have now uh, subscribe to um, on uh, you know through YouTube or excuse me through iTunes and I've been listening to podcasts about Frederick the Great of Prussia there's one on the history of La Cucina of cooking uh, there's one on on Roman emperors there's one on uh, Charlemagne so and what's interesting in all of this is is you're listening to uh, the language you're learning and you're you're learning so much about different things in history but from a different perspective uh, that I do had a series on China as well and and of course that's been my experience with all these languages with the Russian with the Czech with the Romanian why do I you know learn these languages because it's so much fun to enter this different world I listen I'm following the Moscow election in Russia in Russian uh, I'm getting their perspective on the Syrian crisis uh, and, you know, watch movies, read books. So to me, my learning of languages, I should add too that I'm also reading because when I go to bed, I like to read. So I'm reading Umberto Eco's Il Nome della Rosa in Italian. So I got a lot of Italian stuff going. It's just, it's fun. It's so much fun. So for me, I, I must admit, I am more made, motivated initially by by being able to access the language. Because if I think of the amount of time, you know, that I have to enjoy the language here in Vancouver, I can go to an Italian restaurant and I can chat up the waiter, maybe in Italian. That's very brief. Uh, however, if I'm in my car for an hour going to Whistler and it'll be another hour coming back and I'll be listening to this novel, I mean, that's a lot of enjoyment. 
That's a lot of enjoyment. I mean, some people would perhaps be more interested in what kind of car they're driving to go up to Whistler. Me, I have my seven-year-old Saab and it does me just fine. Uh, in fact, you know, it's, it's easier almost to control the, uh, the CDs in that car than in a more modern, sophisticated car with modern CD players and stuff like that. But th the amount of time that I enjoy basically listening and reading far exceeds the amount of time that I am able to spend speaking the language. And I think that's not unusual. I could be wrong, but uh, people who learn the language in order to say a few things because they maybe have an opportunity to use it a few times and then they're disappointed and they didn't do so well. Uh, I'm not saying that that's not a legitimate uh, reason to learn a language, but if you, if you think of the, the time of enjoyment that you're going to have, it seems to me that the amount of enjoyment that we can have listening to you know, podcasts or watching movies or reading books uh, and gaining that different, you know, perspective on cultures or even on world events or on history and cooking and so forth, that length of time is greater than the amount of time we would have actually engaging someone in a conversation. Plus, if I invest all of that time in these kinds of activities, then when I go to speak, I have a much better background from which to improve my speaking. So eventually my speaking will come along. So it's not that I'm not interested in speaking, but in my own case, my motivation in learning Russian and learning Czech and learning Italian and brushing up my German is all about this access that I get to their world. Uh, but I do get the benefit that when I then go to Prague as I did, or go to Berlin as I did fairly recently, or uh, when I was with my wife in Italy two years ago, then we can, of course, we can speak. But anyway, I just wanted to point out that, that I am tremendously motivated and I get great enjoyment. I mean, I have, I don't know how many books I have in Italian that I haven't yet read. Uh, I was counting my uh, audio CDs up there in different languages, Russian, Czech, German, Swedish. I mean, I've got to have, I don't know, 500 CDs, some of which are MP3 CDs. Uh, some of which I've listened to. I mean, I've got a, a I am never bored. And, uh, you know, after I finish my Italian period, then I'm going to do some Swedish because I don't want to just jump in and do a video. I want to kind of enjoy experiencing that Swedish thing. And I've got a lot of Swedish historical uh, audiobooks that I've bought uh, and books. So that's my enjoyment. Now, I might be a bit unusual in that regard. Uh, other people, maybe they like chatting on the internet, uh, finding language partners on the internet, uh, reading different language blogs, which I also do, by the way. And so there are many different reasons why people learn languages, or some people need it for their job, or they are, you know, move to a different country. So there could be many, many uh, reasons why people learn languages. I just wanted to share with you my reason for learning languages. And so I look forward to hearing from you about why you learn languages and also uh, any comments as to what your preferred frequency is for these videos. Thank you for listening. Bye for now.